Hello everybody, welcome back to the Spoked Willow YouTube channel. We're back today with episode 19 of the Andy Schleck Pro Cyclist Mode playthrough, uh, where today we will hopefully be defending the yellow jersey at the Tour de l'Avenir. Uh, we took the jersey on stage 3, I think. Uh, defended it on stage four and now we're heading into the mountains which is our domain so uh, hopefully we'll be able to extend the advantage and maybe even pick up a couple of stage wins in today's video I think we're gonna play the next three stages so two mountain stages and then a hilly stage and then the next video after that will be the final stage of the Tour de l'Avenir and then these two climbing races as well uh, I think today today's video and then the next episode episode 20 will probably be the two most exciting videos of the season because there's a lot of climbing on the menu so let's get right into it and hopefully we can pick up some wins both uh in terms of stages and one day races and in general classification as well all right so we're underway here in our first stage in the mountains at the tour de la avenir we're in the leader's yellow jersey uh, and our plan for today's stage is a pretty simple one Basically just hang tight over the first three climbs of the day and then kind of let it fly on the final climb uh, It's a long pretty steep climb. So we should have plenty of opportunities to Prove ourselves to be the best climber in the race and drop our GC rivals basically um, Not really sure Who exactly will be our biggest challengers on the day? I'm imagining uh, Giovanni Aliotti, who is currently riding for Bora in the Giro in real life, uh, will be one of them. Um, Henry Van den Bell as well, who I think in this game is riding for the Lotto Sudal U23 team. Probably two riders that I want to keep an eye on, but you never know. There could be other riders as well who uh, surprise me and do well. But we have a plus five race to hit condition on the day, so that's about as good as you can get. Uh, we're absolutely flying with plus fives to our mountain rating. Um, the plus 11 to the resistance is huge. So I think we should pretty much destroy the field today on that final climb and gain a lot of time on everyone else in the race. So we're pretty much at the foot of the final climb at this point. We're in a peloton of 19 riders with one survivor of the breakaway up the road. So not a ton of teammates presumably in this group which should play into our hands for an attack because there will be less riders to try and chase us down once we decide to make our move uh which will probably be a fair ways into the climb it's a long climb so i don't want to go too early and tire ourselves out uh and risk losing time but we will definitely be going on the offensive today as two of our teammates way back in the race have fallen unfortunately so with 12 kilometers to go, our final teammate Heidemann is out of gas now, but it was a great ride by him to stay with us over these three category one climbs. Uh, he was able to get us bottles whenever we needed them. So big thank you to him today. Hopefully we can win the stage to repay his efforts. And now inside of 10 kilometers to go, the pace has come out of the group. There's no one really left to work. So I think it's about time to make our move and kick things off. So we're going to attack with 8.6 kilometers to go out of the group of favorites. It was down to only 10 riders. We're going to catch up here with this rider from the breakaway, Voissard. Uh, we'll see whether or not he wants to ride with us. But I'd imagine he doesn't have a ton of energy left. This rider, Petrucci, brought the peloton back together. Um, so we didn't quite get away in our first attempt at it. But... There goes Giovanni uh, Al Aliotti, uh, <laughs> butchered his name there. Aliotti attacks, so we're going to follow him. Vanden Bell is also here. Um, so it's the, the the three riders, or the two riders and myself that I thought were going to be in this position. I wanted to get on the wheel there of Vanden Bell. Didn't quite happen, so I'm going to have to attack across to catch him. Uh, we're inside of five kilometers to go, so... It's about time to start cranking things up and turning the screw. Let's put the effort up to 85 here and see uh, 
if these guys can follow, let's actually attack again now that we've come across to Ven and Bell. And now we'll stick it back on Effort Cursor with 2.8 kilometers to go to the line. We have a gap of 30 seconds almost immediately to Ven and Bell, and a th another 30 seconds now up over 40 seconds back to Aliotti. So if this holds, we should be gaining big time on our two major GC rivals in this race. Um, and we still have plenty of energy left in the tank thanks to our great race day condition. So we should be able to keep extending this advantage all the way to the line, uh, just like we had hoped. And basically we're gonna take a ton of time on the guys who are gonna challenge us at this race. Uh, we're riding through the fog a little bit here into the final 400 meters. Let's sprint for it and let's celebrate as we cross the line. Big win for Andy Schleck. Uh, looks like we're gonna take over two minutes on our closest GC rivals. So like we thought, we are by far the strongest climber in this race. It's a U23 race, so that was kind of to be expected. Henry Van den Bell crosses the line at about two minutes and 40 seconds down on uh, Andy Schleck, and Giovanni Aliotti is the third rider. Both of them losing a lot of time, but it's a good day for Andy Schleck. Big win and extend our lead on GC significantly. We're into stage six now at the Tour de l'Avenir. We've got another plus five race day condition, so we're really flying right now in terms of our form. We peaked for this race and it's really definitely paying off at this point. Uh, it's a bit of a shorter stage today, under 90 kilometers, uh, with a fairly steep finish. I wouldn't say it's really a huge uphill, but definitely a, a bit of a punchy finish. It's a hilly stage today, um, so not quite our speciality, but with our great race day condition, we probably should have good enough legs to contend for the stage win today as well. Uh, after the previous stage, uh, we now have a lead of over three minutes on Van den Bell and a lead of over four minutes on Aliotti. So unless something goes catastrophically wrong, basically, we should have the GC of this race wrapped up at this point. Um, so we can afford to ride a little bit more defensively now, but I still do want to try and pick up as many stage wins as I can before the race comes to a close. We're heading under the five kilometer to go banner now. It looks like today's stage might be one for the breakaway as they still have almost two minutes of an advantage inside the final five kilometers. A couple teams are chasing pretty hard, but I think it might be too little too late. Uh, three kilometers to go now. We're on the steepest part of this final climb. Uh, so I don't think these riders are gonna bring them back, but we're gonna follow the wheel of Sweeney here to try and stay in the best possible position. The breakaway's inside of one kilometer to go, so they're gonna be fighting out the stage now. Um, and they are indeed gonna take the win here. With a French rider winning it, and now the pack goes for it as well. Yeah, it was, I was gonna say that it seemed like it was more for the hilly sprinters today than the GC contenders. Breakaway is also always an option on stages like that, uh, but we crossed the line without losing any time to anyone significant, so another successful day. We're into stage seven now at the Tour de l'Avenir, our third straight plus five day, so once again, we're on great form for this race. Uh, and as you can see by the profile, there's some huge mountains on the menu today. I would really like to win this stage uh, because it looks like definitely the queen stage of this Tour de l'Avenir. Um, we don't really need too much more time on GC, but I certainly won't turn down a chance to attack and try and win the stage uh, and pick up another victory for Andy Schleck. So. I might also try and get as many KOM points as I can because that's the only classification in the race that we're not leading at the moment, so that would be cool if we could win that one as well, but the main priority is trying to win the stage and really put the GC to bed. So we still have four kilometers to go to the summit of this first HC climb, and there's only 17 riders in the peloton. 
I'm kind of tempted to try and go for like a 75 kilometer long breakaway. Um, I don't know if it would work, but I'm going to try it. Why not? We're by far the strongest rider in this race, so if there's ever a chance to do it and win over multiple mountains, this is the time to do it. So let's attack. We'll put the effort cursor on 70, I guess, to the top of this climb. We got to manage our effort well here because uh, we don't want to go too deep and blow up. Um, and the Lotto Sudal team has riders to try and chase here. So we'll see if we even really get a gap over the top of this climb. Uh, it looks like we will. It looks like we will. So uh, we'll see. Maybe we can replicate Andy Schleck's crazy win on the Galibier in 2011 when he attacked with... 60 kilometers to go i think but at the moment it looks like vanden bell is coming back so we might have a bit of company but i still think it's going to be a hopefully a successful lengthy break so we're on the descent now we have been joined by vanden bell balmer and malobron um i accidentally used my energy gel instead of getting bottles because i misclicked uh, so unfortunately we're not going to have that for the rest of the stage, but that's okay. Hopefully we won't really need it. Um, there's a lot of descending, so we have chances to recover. Also a lot of climbing, uh, but this is a pretty solid group of four, and it's almost two minutes back to everyone else, so I think we're in a good spot at the moment. We're on the penultimate climb of the day now. A few riders have come back, so we're in a group of seven at the moment, but I'm just going to keep the pace steady, 65 on relay. We're even getting a little assistance here from one of the Lotto development riders working for Van and Bell, but if we just keep the pace steady, none of these other riders can hang with Andy Schleck over this amount of climbing, so, uh, and there two riders from the seven are dropped already so it's back down to a group of five uh as van den bell attacks i like that move that's uh he's going for broke basically he has a lot of time to make up but it's one that we have to respond to uh so let's attack back across and get on his wheel and now I'll stick it back on relay i don't mind riding for him if he wants to riding with him not for him riding with him if he wants to cooperate with us uh i think he's the second strongest climber in the race so He's a good ally to have if he's going to work with us, um, but even if he isn't, I still think we're strong enough to try and beat him on the final climb. And actually all that attack by Van and Bell did was drop his teammate because now it's once again the same four riders that uh, we had going into this climb, so back to the status quo. We're now going over the top of this category one climb. We have Van and Bell and Balmer for company pretty long descent to try and recover and get some energy back and then we will battle it out for the stage on the final climb of the day. Balmer unfortunately just crashed on the descent so it's just Andy Schleck and Henry Van and Bell now. Uh, I think Balmer and Malolbrin, uh are the two riders in the second group on the road but we have about a two minute advantage on them so I think it's going to be Schleck first, Vanden Bell for the stage at this point. We're turning left onto the final climb now. My plan is to basically just keep riding a steady tempo. Uh, I don't think Vanden Bell can match us if we basically just keep upping the pace as the climb goes on. Um, and I don't think anyone else in the race can come back to us given the gaps that we already have. So uh, he may attack at some point, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. Um, but I think the stage is ours to lose at this point. We've upped the tempo a little bit, 75 effort now that we're uh, getting towards the finish line. Vandenbell's still hanging in there pretty well, but we're putting huge chunks of time into everyone else in the race. Um, and I think that sooner or later Vandenbell is going to fall off the pace as well. We're inside of five kilometers to go, and actually now we're inside of four kilometers to go uh, to the line here. So let's bump up the pace one more time. Let's stick it up to 80 for now um, to try and drop Vanden Bell. And if need be, we can attack in the final kilometer 
uh, to try and win the stage. But we have over a four minute advantage on everyone else in the race, so this is pretty much done and dusted. Pretty impressive ride by Van den Bell actually to hang in here and stay with us for as long as he has, but I think we will have more than him in the tank in the end to try and win the stage here. Uh, we've done basically all the work, all the pace making in the group. Uh, as Van den Bell starts to crack outside of a kilometer to go. So we're now home free to take the stage win here. Uh, but yeah, we we attacked on that HC climb and basically pulled the group of favorites all the way. So we definitely deserve this win. Let's celebrate as we cross the line. A big win for Andy Schleck in the Tour de l'Avenir. Um, that might be the longest... Uh, breakaway attack I've ever done in Pro Cycling Manager as a GC favorite, so I saw the opportunity and had to do it. Impressive ride as well by Henry Vandenbell to stay with us for so long. Hats off to him, but unless something goes truly wrong now, Andy Schleck will win the Tour de l'Avenir this year. So after victory in stage seven, we now lead the race by over four minutes to Henry Vandenbell in second place and over 10 minutes to everyone else in the race. So Vandenbell is really the only rider at this point that we have to worry about in the concluding stage eight of this race. So that's gonna be it for the racing uh, in episode 19. Uh, two stage wins out of three stages played is pretty solid, I think. We set ourselves up really nicely to take the overall victory as well. So next episode, we will finish off the Tour de l'Avenir, and then we'll ride these two mountainous one-day races as well. And hopefully we can pick up a couple more wins there. Um, the season is winding down because after those three mountainous races, we're kind of in the home stretch with just a couple one-day races remaining. Uh, it will be interesting to see whether or not we get picked for the world championships uh, for Luxembourg, since it is a pretty mountainous course. Um, if we do, I guess that will be kind of the the finale to our season. But if not, we have the U23 version of Il Lombardia to try and win as well. So uh, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it's a lot of fun to ride with such a good climber in these mountain stages. So this was a fun one to play and I think the next episode will be fun as well so if you enjoyed it um, make sure you tune in for next episode as well and hopefully we can pick up a couple more uh, victories that time um, but thanks again for watching I will see you next time